this point in the course, you've created the basic user interface for your app. It's time to dive into some coding with Swift. But before you do that, it's important to understand some programming theory of how it all works. If you're already familiar with the concept of object-oriented programming, feel free to skip this lecture. Swift is an object-oriented programming language, which means most of the code you write will work with objects of some kind. I've hinted this in the course before, Think back to the how does an app work section. Remember how I said an app is essentially made of objects that can pass messages to each other? To review, when you're writing an iOS app, sometimes you'll be using objects that are created for you by iOS, such as UI button. And sometimes you'll be using objects that you create yourself, such as view controllers. But what is an object exactly? Programmers like to group related functionality into objects, which each have a particular job. For example, you might have one object whose job it is to parse a file another object whose job it is to authenticate the user, and a final object that's responsible for performing a tricky calculation. Each object takes care of a particular part of the program. In a full-blown app, you'll work with tens or maybe even hundreds of objects. The object you've spent the most time with so far is your view controller. The alert pop-up is also an example of an object, so is the button on the screen, and in fact, even the text that you have inside the button is also an object. An object can have both data and functionality. For example, consider the hit me button in your app. First, it has some data, such as its color, its position on the screen, its width, or its height. Second, it has some functionality, such as the ability to detect when a user taps on it, highlight itself when tapped, and trigger an action in response. The thing that provides functionality to an object is known as a method. Now, if you've worked with other programming languages in the past, you may have heard this referred to as function or subroutine. Swift also uses the term function. In fact, the keyboard says func. The difference is a method is a function that belongs to an object. Your show alert action is an example of a method. You can tell it's a method because the line says func, again, short for function. Then you have the name of the method and then two parentheses where you put the parameters inside. Then you have an area inside curly braces where you put your code. This is known as the body of the method. Each line of code you add to the body will be executed one after the other. This concept of methods may still seem a little bit weird, so here's an example. Imagine that you, or at least an object named you, wants to throw a party. You clean the room, you put on some music, but you forgot to buy cookies. Fortunately, you have another object friend named Steve who lives next to a convenience store. So you send a message to Steve saying, hey, can you bring some cookies? The computer now switches over to Steve and now executes his buy cookies method from the top to the bottom. When it's done, it switches back to your code. The Steve object also has some data. He has a wallet with some money in it. He goes to the store and he exchanges that money data for another important piece of data, cookies. He brings those cookies back to your object and you place them on the cookie table. Now, if Steve eats all the cookies along the way, your app has a bug. Sending messages sounds a lot more complicated than it really is. Sending messages is a nice conceptual way to think about how objects communicate, but really all that's going on is the computer switches over from the throw party method to the buy cookie method and then back again. Often the terms calling a method or invoking a method are used instead. They all mean the same thing. The computer jumps over to the other method, executes its code, and then jumps back to where it was after it's done. The most important thing to remember from this lecture is that objects contain two things. First, they contain methods, like the steps involved in buying ice cream. Second, they contain the actual data, such as the money to buy ice cream or the ice cream itself. Objects can look at each other's data. To a degree, after all, Steve might not like you poking inside his wallet. You can also ask other objects to perform their methods, such as when you ask the UI alert controller to perform its add action method to add an awesome button as an action on the alert. Asking objects to perform their methods is how you get an app to do things.